And we even have an email. What was your name, sir, in the second row there? My name's Andrew. Andrew and? Susie. Susie. And where are you from? Melbourne. Melbourne. <laughs> that means it's a suburb you don't want to tell me. Which? We're from Richmond. You're from Richmond. Are you really? Mm. Or is that... <laughs> or are you from Turak and you just don't want to say it? <laughs> North, North Turak. Are you really from Turak? No. You are from Richmond? Yes. Right, okay. And how old are you? Uh, oh, okay, okay. Tell you what, I don't, I don't want to know how old you are, but I'm going to ask you some bonds. He's 43. He's 43. He's 43. <laughs> you lost that Turak veneer in a second, didn't you? I'm, we're from Richmond. We were driving BMW. It was lovely. He's 43. <laughs> Just amazing from Deborah Hutton to Roberta Williams in a second. <laughs> all right, Andrew, let's bond. Let's find out what we've got in common here, my friend. I haven't spoken to you at all. But have you do you use the internet much? Uh, I'm sorry? Do you use the internet much? Rarely. Rarely? Oh. Have you ever booked anything on the internet? Never. Never? Oh my god, we've lost what about you, John? Yes. Sir. Yes, you have. You're out now, forget. <laughs> you've, got, you've never used the internet at all. Do you know what it is? Uh, <laughs> I have heard of it. You have heard of it? <gasps> you could well be my favourite person ever. Not knowing what the internet is. No, that's the face of a man who's downloaded porn. <laughs> oh, I've, I've never heard of it. What is this internet of which you speak? <laughs> so, John. Uh, how old are you, John? 41. 41. All right. Have you, do you use the internet much? Yeah. Yes. Have you ever uh, booked something on the internet, say a flight, the end of which you've had to enter in your date of birth? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever done that thing where instead of typing in the year in which you were born, you click on an arrow and all the possible years in which you were born scroll down? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever gotten really depressed as to how far back you've had to go? Uh, <laughs> find your year? And it starts last year. It starts in 2007. How many one-year-olds are booking a trip to Tunisia? <laughs> Have you ever been in a church, uh, been unsure of the hymn you're supposed to sing, so you've mimed it? <laughs> I just mumble. You just mumble? Nice work. Yeah, I was at a wedding last year and the hymn came on uh, Jerusalem. And uh, I don't know if you know it. And did those feet in ancient times walk upon England's pastures green? Yeah, that's how I sing. So I decided not to sing it. I thought I'll mime it and no one will know. But there was a woman next to me also miming, but she was miming badly. She was going, And I thought, I don't want people to know that I'm miming. So I, I mime still, but I did it with gusto. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. John, have you ever laid in a bath, looked down, and moulded your pubic hair into a mohawk? Uh, no? Damn. Have you had your prostate checked? No. 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 What about you, Andrew? I'm sure. Really? Has any man here had their prostate checked? Definitely. Yes, you have, sir. <laughs> Did you say definitely? <laughs> oh, there was no doubt about it. I was unsure at first, but it didn't take long for me to make my mind up. That, my friend, was a prostate examination. <laughs> what? What's your name? By my best mate, actually. Sorry, by your best mate. <laughs> Who is a doctor? Who is a doctor? Yes. yes. How long has he been telling you that? got a degree in this. <laughs> <laughs> what one word would you use to describe the experience of having your prostate checked? Warming. Warming. <laughs> <laughs> what? Was it by an open fire? <laughs> if you've had yours done, you'd know. You sorry? If you've had yours done, you'd know the feeling. I have had mine done, not by my best mate. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure warming isn't the word I'd use. <laughs> And substitute the M for an N, that might be closer. <laughs> Warning. Um, <clears throat> was it at the surgery? Did you go around to his surgery? Yeah. Was it weird having it done by a mate? Yep. 
Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's freaky. No doubt about that. Can't look at him on the squash court the same way anymore. I asked one guy in the audience one night, I said, what one word would you use to describe the experience of having your prostate checked? And he said, uh, new. <laughs> Well, I did have my prostate checked last year, at the beginning of last year, and I really wasn't ready for it. <laughs> and by that I mean I thought I was too young. I wasn't, you know, standing on a bus and just, whoa! <laughs> you a doctor there, big fella? <laughs> so before I did that, I called my grandfather, because my grandfather now, is, he's, he's kicking on, he's just turned 90 actually. Uh, and I called him up and I said, Grandad, I've got to get my prostate checked. What can I expect? And he just went, oh, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> and then he said, which hospital are you going to go to? And I told him. And he said, that's the same hospital I went to. You know what? You might even get my doctor. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, how am I going to know if it's your doctor? And he went, easy. When you bend over, look straight ahead. If there's a dent on the wall in front of you, that's my doctor. <laughs> Oh, here's a, here's a question for everyone. Has anyone ever been on a flight that has aborted the landing? And by that, I'm, yes, you have? Excellent. John, where were you flying to? Into Birmingham. Into Birmingham, right. It wasn't for safety reasons. <laughs> where were you guys flying? Hobart. Hobart's where I had it. I was flying into Hobart Airport, beginning of last year again, and it was, it was one of those things where, you know, when the plane's about to land, you get a little bit excited. It doesn't matter how old you are, the wheels go down, you look out the window, you can see the airport, you start going, oh, here we go, here we go. And it was like 200 metres, 100 metres, 50 metres off the ground, the plane pulled back up again. Just came, it was just, mm, and then hit turbulence. And there was a minute and a half as it circled the airport in which no one said a word. And I was just sitting there going, great, I'm going to die on a Jetstar flight to Hobart. <laughs> After about a minute of everyone going, ah, Captain came on and made the single coolest announcement I've ever heard in my life. Just out of the blue, just came on and went, ladies and gentlemen, you can probably tell we didn't land then. <laughs> This is because the wind conditions just changed a little bit on the way in and uh, they were pushing us slightly off course. So we just decided to pull back up, do another lap at the airport. This is perfectly normal procedure. We'll have you on the ground in about five minutes' time. And I just thought, that is pretty damn cool for a man that nearly killed us all. Because that wasn't wind. He fucked up. He was just coming into home, I go, so Barry, Salamanca Markets tomorrow, might buy a moon pad. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and see, I had mining, because if that was me, my voice would not have held together. If I had almost crashed a plane with 200 people on board and pulled it up at the last minute, there'd have been a pause. Then you would have heard me come on and go, oh, I'm really sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> but you know what, as much as I admired him for holding it together, I reckon I would have admired the truth just that little bit more. I'd have loved it if that plane had come in, almost landed, not gone back up, hit turbulence, there was a pause, and then you just heard the captain come on and just go, holy freaking shit, people. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> you must have felt that down the back, because fuck, I felt that up here. <laughs> I mean it, I nearly landed on a road. <laughs> There's a family of four in a Toyota Prado shitting themselves right now.